So in this video, we're solving quadratics using something called the null factor law. Now, the null factor law is uh, its really straightforward, and you've known the null factor law for a very, very long time now. Uh, now, if I tell you that there are two numbers, A times B, and the answer is equal to zero, so something times something equals zero. Now, you can probably tell me uh, one of two things straight away. You can either tell me that A must be equal to zero, or B must be equal to zero. So in other words, it might be like uh, zero times five. That would be equal to zero. Or it could be maybe A is four, in which case B must be equal to zero. Four times zero, that would also be equal to zero. So. The null factor law just says that a times b is equal to zero. Let's let's write this properly. If, yeah, try again. If a times b is equal to zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero. That's what the null factor law that null factor law is. Now we can use the null factor law to solve these three questions. Solve the following. That just means find out what x is. So x squared minus 2x equals 0. Now uh, there's an x here and there's an x here. And this is an x squared term and this is an x term. We can factorize that. We can say that x is the common factor. x times x makes x squared and x times negative 2 makes negative 2x equals 0. So now you might be thinking, what's this got to do with the null factor theorem? Well, or null factor law. Well, this is x times x minus 2. So in other words, this is our a value, a, x, times, and this is our b value, x minus 2. So if a, x, times b, x minus 2, is equal to 0, then either x equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. So if x equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, that means that x equals, in this case, 2, negative 2, move it over here, positive 2, x equals 2. So this is the first time, really, that you've seen, or maybe the second time, that you've seen that an equation can have two answers. So x equals 0 or x equals 2. All right, let's try this second question here. x squared minus 15 equals 0. Now, this is a difference of two squares. So we can rewrite x squared minus 15 as x plus the square root of 15 and x minus the square root. Of 15. That's going to be equal to 0. Alright, so difference of two squares, difference. 15 is not a square number, but we can use square roots to make it sort of look like a square number. Now, in this case, this says a x plus 15 times b x minus root 15 is equal to 0. So that means that x plus root 15 must be equal to 0 or x minus root 15 is equal to 0. That means that x is equal to the positive root 15 comes over here and becomes negative root 15, or x equals the negative root 15 comes over here and becomes positive root 15. So two answers, either x is equal to negative root 15 or x is equal to positive root 15. Uh, last question, 2x squared equals 50. Now, where's the 0? Uh, we, how do we use the null factor law if it's not equal to 0? Well, I can make it equal to 0 because I can write it as 2x squared minus 50 equals 0. And now I can just factorize that. So I can see a common factor here of 2. So I can bring 2 at the outside and we end up with x squared minus 25 equals 0. 
and we can see this is x squared minus 25. That's a really neat uh, um, difference of two squares. 2 bracket x plus 5, x minus 5 equals 0. Now, if that's the case, 2 times something times something equals 0. That means that either a, x plus 5 is equal to 0, or b, x minus 5 is equal to 0. So, x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. So, x equals 5, or x equals negative 5. Two answers. All right, that's the null factor law. Generally, you end up with two answers when you're solving questions like this.